So this is kind of interesting. So we've got, you know, the new TV season or whatever, I think I guess is about to yes, drop. That's right. And so uh, Catching Eyes is a new remake of The Bachelor, but with a twist, put this up on the screen. So it's called The Golden Bachelor, <laughs> Looking for Love and a Pickleball Partner. And I actually, unironically, I actually genuinely love this. Uh -huh. So this man's name is Jerry Turner. He is The, uh, the Bachelor. Um, he's in his 70s. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a group of women who are between 60 and 75 who are all vying for his affection here in the traditional bachelor style. They say in this New York Times piece that um, they include divorcees, widows, mothers, and grandmothers. They were talking to the producers of this show, and they said that at first when they brought the contestants into like the Bachelor Mansion or whatever, I've never watched The Bachelor, but this is my understanding I of how this thing works. I am familiar with the concept. I'm generally familiar yes. with the, the product, but they brought them into the, the Bachelor Mansion and they were looking around at the bedrooms and everything, and it was a sort of like typical uh -huh. bachelor reaction, yelling off the balcony, saying, um, and they said, okay, this feels like the bachelor. And then they came down to the kitchen and had mimosas, they were doing toasts, and we said, okay, this also feels like the bachelor. And then one woman said, let's toast to social security. Good. <laughs> and they're like, all right. That's, that's not the bachelor. That's different. Yeah. But apparently, this, this is no accident um, in programming choices. Put this up on the screen, also from the New York Times. TV network's last best hope, boomers. Viewers have fled primetime lineups for streaming outlets with one notable exception, people over 60. So basically, the only people who are left watching regular TV programs like The Bachelor are all over 60. Yep. And so, you know, reading the room, um, television networks are increasingly programming for this older audience. Let me, and they point specifically to The Golden Bachelor as like case in point of this. Um, but here's some of the numbers. This was stunning to me. Just nine years ago, the median age of most top rated network entertainment shows ranged from the mid 40s to the early 50s. Just nine years ago, not even a decade ago, it was 45 for the sitcom How I Met Your Mother, 52 for Big Bang Theory. Some shows like Brooklyn Nine Nine had a median viewer as young as 39. Hmm. Now, in the recent, most recent network television season, which ended in May, median viewer was older than 60. Median. Including yeah. The Voice, 64.8. The Masked Singer, 60. Grey's Anatomy, 64. Young Sheldon, 65 plus, the highest range that Nielsen provides. And so it's not just The Golden Bachelor. They're bringing back Law & Order, starring the 82-year-old Sam Watterson. I couldn't believe that. When I saw that photo, I'm like, Sam, retire, my <laughs> man. You've been um, on TV since before I was born. I, so yeah. they're, they're bringing back um, Quantum Leap, which I actually, as a kid, I used okay. to love watching Quantum Leap. Yeah, but you should not be bringing these things back. Yeah. <laughs> Magnum P.I. CBS is resurrecting Matlock, a show <laughs> they say The Simpsons used to lampoon for its older fan base. Last year, NBC found a surprise hit in Night Court, another like 1980s oh era, 80s, early 90s era show that I also watched as a child. Uh -huh. And they talked about how they intentionally tried to avoid computer screens and other, quote, trappings of modern life. We really intentionally wanted Night Court to feel like a place a bit frozen in time. Was the idea, and apparently it worked for their viewing audience because it was a, a breakout success, the, the revamped Night Court, which I never would have expected. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, of course. It's fascinating. And the reason why it matters, above all, is that this is what props up linear television. I've talked ad nauseum about cable carriage fees and all that other stuff. But the bedrock, the beating heart of linear TV, of network TV, for years was the serialized show. The modern families, the, uh, you know, the, I'm talking more my era. Like mm -hmm. you said, Law and Order, what is it, NC I think that's what it's called, NCIS. Yeah, I think so. Um, NCIS, which has various different uh, ones. Law and Order, you know, Law and Order SVU, the various spinoffs um, of all of that. They were the bedrock of television. It's what kept America interested. It really peaked, in my opinion, with Lost back in 2000, mm. 2004. Mm. It was really like the height of their powers when they were demanding <clears throat> huge amounts of money. But people don't forget this. Lost launched and actually was helped by the internet. It was one of the first forum board TV shows where people would talk on forums about what was going on with Lost. And that really presages the eventual move to streaming television and really a collapse of the funding model. Because the thing is that these shows and the whole anchor you know, that they present at these big conferences helped prop up 
an entire advertising scheme which came in the middle of commercial breaks. And now, almost a decade into the Netflix, HBO, Peacock, and all these other eras, a lot of that is really gone. You know, even the ads that we watch on those streaming services, if you're ad supported, they're like 15 second spots for some idiot State Farm ad. You know, yeah. it's not the original ads that demand the premiums that once were. It's really interesting. You know, there was a. Uh, do you remember? Do you ever watch The West Wing? This yeah. Is, yeah. So, like The West Wing, for example, uh, one of the reasons why it went on for seven seasons was that it was one of the only shows that got rich people to watch network TV. Mm. And so, even though the audience wasn't that big, yeah. it was like doctors and lawyers and the intellectual class. But that's supposedly. the whole CNBC business. That's the model. CNBC business. Yeah. And they were able. To, NBC at that point was printing money off of The West Wing. ER, for example, was another long serialized one. And, and look, I enjoyed some of these shows, you know, at the time and all that. But I think they died you know, a good death uh, for a reason. <laughs> um, and I think it's very sad, actually, the fact that it is now effectively an elderly market. We already saw this fight that just happened with ESPN Disney with the, uh, what was it, the... I forget who the cable carrier Charter was. Communications, Charter Communications, right? that's mm -hmm. right. This is the future. I mean, very soon, you're going to move to an era where the cable bundle is diminishing like nobody's business. Once sports goes fully online, it is dead, absolutely yeah. dead. And with that will come the collapse of NBC Nightly News, ABC World 2020, or whatever these programs are, and the Today Show, a lot of these things. I mean, these, these programs were hundreds of million dollars. At one point, Matt Lauer, was single-handedly responsible for almost a billion in ad revenue for what was going on over Jeez. at NBC. I mean, what, what are they making today? Maybe 100 mil? And I, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, obviously that's a lot of money, but that's like one-tenth of what they used to make yeah. over there. So you got to think about it that way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the business piece is really fascinating yeah. to me. And I mean, the sad reality that's increasingly coming into view is, you know, the thought was, oh, it'd be better for consumers once you weren't paying for the whole cable news bundle, but increasingly people are paying more for like yeah. 18 different streaming right. services and getting less. So it hasn't worked out for consumers the way that one might hope that it I would. I think we'll get there. We're in a chaos era. Maybe, right. I don't know, we'll see. But um, you know, in terms of the the cultural representation piece though, mm -hmm. like with the Golden Bachelor and whatever, I'm actually here for it. It's funny, I was, uh, Kyle watches golf all yeah. the time. It's always on in the background. Golf Channel. And yeah. Golf Channel. And he watches TV like he's an old man. It's like Golf Channel and oh. Weather Channel. <laughs> it's like 80-year-olds and Kyle are yeah. watching these channels. But anyway, they played this um, senior women's golf tour on the channel. And I actually really appreciate it because so much of representation of older women in particular is like very limited mm -hmm. in terms of television. I feel like older men, you know, the salt and pepper, like debonair yeah. older guy, like that's been a thing for a while. But to see these older women, many of whom just look like a regular old grandma out there doing these incredible athletic feats and like, huh. you know, they were amazing on the yeah. golf course. It was kind of cool. And Good. so I'm I'm for the the Golden Bachelor. I'm excited to see what this is all about. Like these the the dude is less interesting to me than the fact that they're actually gonna have women who are age appropriate to him right. who are vying for his attention. So I'm kind of here for the uh the cool old grandma representation that this new era could represent. I, I agree. I just think though it's an example of the original age of the mass market TV show, which could appeal oh, to tens of millions. Absolutely. That's gone. I mean, I was well, talking about Lost. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing with, you know, right. boomers, this has been, their whole life yeah. has been centered around like, when I get home and in the primetime shows, like we sit down as a family and like the TV is central. And so they're just, they're, that habit is not gonna break because it's been a lifelong habit. Right. Whereas for younger generations, you know, they've, they've evaluated the landscape and switched over more readily and more easily. And the other issue that's a problem for the networks in terms of the business model is it's still what they call the key demo, which is I think like 25 to 25 54. 54 yeah where advertisers, that's what you sell your ad revenue based on because that's the group that uh -huh. is most lucrative that advertisers really wanna reach. So when all of your audiences are like freaking 65 years old, I mean, that's the other issue for them in terms of the, the advertising model. Some of the numbers you guys won't even believe. Like I just looked it up. The season three premiere of Lost got 18.8 .8 million US viewers. Like that is so, it's, that's like one tenth of the adult population. And I remember it as a 
communal experience yeah. at the time. I still love that show. Uh, but, you know, that those days, they are long, long gone. So you're going to see more of the Golden Bachelors. And hey, more power to them. But from a funding and a business point of view and a mass market, mass culture point of view, that thing is, it's uh, that's a ship sale. That is a white flag of surrender yeah. uh, for what they're doing. Indeed. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.